What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today I wanna to talk about maybe my favorite, maybe the best pistol caliber carbine on the market. Now, it's gonna put me in a weird situation here, uh, claiming my favorite, because I'm not exactly sure yet, but I'll tell you it's my favorite right now. Part of that is because there's a few very high quality PCCs that I've just got my hands on, and partly because there's a couple really good ones that are coming out this year as well, but I wanna give you my odds on favorite thus far. And you guys have seen this before on the channel, but you haven't seen a thousand run review yet because I did have some issues with the original. This is the SIG MPX. Now this particular guy is a Gen 3 as opposed to the Gen 2, which I previously had with the key mod rail and uh, the uh, standard trigger and all that stuff. And then obviously on top of that, uh, there's a few things that are a little bit different with this one. So let's go through it a little bit and talk about some of the stuff that makes the MPX so good. First thing I like about the MPX is that it does have the short stroke piston in it, which makes it a lot different recoil and pulse than the standard pistol caliber carbines, which are generally blowback, delayed blowback, or the rotating blowback. So this particular design ends up having a gas system in it, which makes it a lot more soft shooting than your standard pistol caliber carbines. And I'm not joking about that. The only thing that really compares to this is the MP5 or the MP5K. Uh, particularly the MP5, the full 8-inch version. Now, I would say the full 8-inch version has about the same recoil as the 5-inch MPX. Add in the fact that this MPX actually has an 8-inch barrel, uh, which is very hard to find. Uh, I don't even believe that they make them anymore, although you can find, can find aftermarket options from like inlet we trust and stuff like that. But I prefer the 8-inch barrel. And the reason for that is you get more velocity, more hitting power, more bullet expansion over something like a handgun. So not only do you get more points of contact, you're allowed to shoot that round faster and more accurately, but now the round does more damage as well. And for three more inches, <laughs> Three more inches is important. It's a pretty easy trade-off as far as mobility and versatility. I've had no problem uh, moving this around structures or anything like that. An eight inch is always better than five. So uh, I like that a lot. I like the low recoil, recoil impulse even than that. On top of here, we have a Lancer carbon fiber rail. The carbon fiber rail uh, loses a lot of weight as opposed to the standard one. I think you have like three or four ounces less weight, and it is a bigger, thicker rail, which I like a lot because uh, I, I have bigger old hands and I like that particular setup. Now, we also have some uh, Slateback Industries uh, rail covers there uh, so it doesn't get so hot, and then we have a Surefire Mini Scout on there as well as the right Optics, which is still in testing. 3,000 rounds for this now. This thing's a bad mother, especially for the price. I like it. It's also veteran-owned and American-made, so I like that a lot. It comes with the cutie mount. Badass little red dot. All the Gen 3 SIGs come with the new flat face Timney trigger, which makes it very fast, very accurate. Uh, I shot this against the BNT because they're my two odds on favorite right now, aside from the MP5. And uh, this has a significantly better trigger, which allows it to have a much faster overall rate of fire. I like that a lot. Now, we, we have changed the grip here. This is a Magpul XLK2. I like those a lot. Those just came out this year. We're going to see a review on one of those here shortly. We have full ambi controls on the MPX, which is awesome, especially for my wife. When you shoot this, you'll find out that it, uh, it'll probably be a little bit better than your standard high points and stuff that you struggle with. The controls are on the MPX. They're all super slicked up. They're super easy to use. Uh, they have an extended charging handle on here right from the factory. I like that a lot. We have the SBA4 brace. Uh, on the back there and we do have the uh, folding brace system as well so the MPX not only has the low recoil like the Air 15 design but unlike the Air 15 design it can fold because it does not require a buffer tube very very nice flared magwell at the bottom there as well and then obviously QD points on the gun which is very nice because my BNT did not come with QD mounts and I, I always think that's kind of a non-issue until I try to put a damn sling on it and then I'm like oh I get it now you know every single time because I don't have the same amount of slings as I do uh, guns. I imagine most people that own a lot of guns, gun reviewers have the same thing. So every once in a while I got a cutie one, cutie off, and that kind of thing. And it's nice that they come with the cutie slots right out of the box, as long as the full length Picatinny rail. Along with having the longer barrel, it obviously also has the longer rail, so it is a little bit easier for me to get my hands on it. There's a lot more aftermarket accessories out here for this because a lot of this gun does take AR accessories, and it does have the same AR controls as well, uh, which me, that's personal bias alone, but this compared to the B&T, it's a little bit easier for me to intuitively operate this because I've been running ARs for years. That being said, uh, my previous Gen 2 did have some reliability problems and on top of that we did have 
parts breakages as well. Not only did we have short strokes, especially with the suppressor on, but we also had the trigger break inside the trigger group. We had a little piece fall off of it. We sent it to SIG and uh, we'll see about how that goes. And that's, and I'm not the only person who had that happen either. When I was down at the Gundy's, I was talking to a guy called Smash Time and he said he had the exact same breakage happen in his trigger. So that's one thing to be careful of. However, with the generational changes, I believe they have fixed that, but it would be nice if SIG would tell you that they have fixed it because if you buy an MPX, it won't say Gen 1, Gen 2, or Gen 3, but it will have those changes. So you're honestly not sure which one you're buying. But if you do get the one with the M-Lock rail and the new flat face tinting trigger, guarantee that's a Gen 3, that's the one I would go after. That being said, all this talk's a lot of talk. Let's go down there and shoot this gun and uh, see if it actually is that good. Before we do that though, I wanna mention my Patreon supporters, thank you. I purchased this gun with Patreon dollars because you guys, everyone else gets to see these awesome reviews. You also purchased the ammo for the channel. So I appreciate that a lot because 1,000 run reviews at least once or twice a month get very pricey in 2022. I also wanna mention a local shelter in Ames, Iowa, it's the YSS. And I'd really appreciate if you go down there, click that link and donate a couple bucks to those kids. And that was a really good thing to do, but you'll be helping them out as well. So go down there, give a couple bucks to those kids, do something good today. Now I want to thank the sponsor of this video, Vetter Holsters. If you are familiar with the channel, know that I actually use Vetter Holsters. Uh, I actually have three or four of them already. So when they asked me to sponsor the video, I was like, hell yeah, why not? Vetter Holsters make some not only pretty cool looking Kydex holsters, but their clips actually work really well. They have good retention and overall the holsters are pretty comfortable to carry and they're not going to break your bank either. They're also completely made in the United States. So if you're looking for a pretty decent holster, why don't you head on over to Vetter Holsters. All right, so now we got this bad boy out of 75 yards here. It will just plink off a little bit and we'll see how that goes. So a lot of people talk about PCC accuracy. I wouldn't have a PCC in my house because it's not accurate. Well, I gotta tell you, I just shot three six inch plates down there. I don't know if you saw that at 75 yards. So that means this gun with remanufactured 147 grade ammo holds groups tighter than six inches at 75 yards. I cannot imagine a home defense scenario where you would need more accuracy than that. But if you do, you're already in some deep shit. So we're at about 140 standing. All day. Move a little closer and let you shoot it. Okay. What'd you think? It's a lot of fun and it's quiet and I don't get anything hitting me in the face, which I like.
Yeah, hostage swinger. Fuckers accurate, wow. All right, to continue to test the accuracy of the MPX, I'm gonna do a one take only, and I'm gonna try to shoot one hostage target, two hostage target, three hostage target, four, four hostage targets in four shots. Uh, we're at about 20 yards. Uh, those are six inch, those two are four inch plates. So that's a tight group to hold, especially standing. I missed one because I hit the dueling tree. <laughs> the dueling tree is sticking out in front of it. Now with the ammo we have left, we'll do a little hip shot. And then we'll bust it out. Oh, I wish we had more. I have 20 rounds already. I have a little bit in my pocket. That'll work. Got some ammo in my pocket. Hard line, do a little home defense, build drill and uh, give you my first impressions. Yeah, we'll just shoot a couple more targets. Just have fun. Think that's good enough for home defense? Yeah. I fucking do. <laughs> All right, so first impressions of the Gen 3 MPX are extremely positive. Shoots like the Gen 2, doesn't have any reliability problems. I like that a lot. The trigger is obviously super superior. You can see how fast and accurate we can shoot the gun. The barrel is extremely accurate as well, which is very nice. Uh, all the accessories work very well in conjunction with one another because they are the standard accessories that I put on my ARs, which is why AR ergonomics works so well. Uh, you can transfer from one platform to another without having to change your training or your accessory uh, location all that much. So I like that a lot. The magazines are expensive, but but reliable. That's one thing you have to remember with the MPX is that it is a premium PCC. Now that's that's saying something. Um, these are going to come in a little bit higher than almost every PCC, lower than the MP5, lower than the BNT, but pretty much higher than everything else. Uh, these come in between $2,000 and $2,500 depending on where you get them. Magazines are $70 a piece, so you have to remember that outfitting one of these for your overall awesome gun is going to cost you a lot of money. That being said, it's going to be cheaper to run than a standard 5.56 gun, and you also are going to be able to run it up close at steel uh, within you know 7 to 10 yards as opposed to going back 50 yards, so it could increase your training a great deal, which it does mine. I also have a lot more 9 mil stockpiled up than I do 5.56, so that's very nice. Another thing to remember about the gun is it does suppress much better than, let's say, a 5.56 because you can run 147 grain subsonic you're not breaking the sound barrier barely any noise comes out of this I also shot this back to back with my mp5 my BNT and uh, this uh, yesterday and this was quieter with the suppressor than the other two guns that being said this has an 8 inch barrel the other two have a 5 inch barrel I imagine that has a lot to do with it overall what do I think about the gun certainly right now it is my favorite pistol caliber carbine um, the BNT is real damn close as well. I don't have thousand round reviews. Uh, I have the thousand round review of the uh, Gen 2, uh, but this one has uh, s some significant upgrades over that one, which I think might push it obviously ahead of that one. Now this is up in there tight again with the MP5K uh, and the BNT APC9 for my favorite pistol caliber carbine. And uh, once we get all the thousand round reviews done of the guns, then we're gonna go out and do a range shoot off. And then I'm gonna tell you which one of the three I think are probably the best. But right now, this one, I can't believe I'm gonna say this is certainly in the lead uh, It's super accurate. It's super soft shooting. It's super fast and the ergonomics are better than the other two because they are AR ergonomics So what do you think? What would you like about it? You've shot all three as well. I Thought it was super easy to shoot. I like that. It has air controls that makes it easy to remember how to use it uh, which is I mean, not saying girls suck at shooting, but there's so many different platforms and controls right. and things like that that makes it easy to remember. Um, it was super soft shooting. It was easy to shoot suppressed. It was very accurate. It was very light, and I I feel like I did a pretty good job. I don't think I missed too many shots nice at shot 70, really well. 75 yards. Yep. Um, so yeah, I would feel super confident having that as my home defense weapon. 
Probably, I would imagine if I was going to give you a home defense weapon without you choosing, I would probably go with this just because you shoot so many ARs, you wouldn't have to learn anything else. That's true. And then a stressful situation hits, oh fuck right. moment hits, what are you going to do? You're probably going to be you looking can't for think stuff. very well. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So I like that. I don't, I don't underestimate that. Also cutie points, sling, sling available points on top of that, out of the box with a adjustable brace is very um, nice as well. Adjust I love full ambi controls because I shoot PCCs and rifles left-handed. You do, you do. Well, overall, I think couldn't have had a better start, but we're definitely going to have to vet it with the remaining 900 rounds. Oh no, that will be such a terrible time. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'll hit you with this video in a couple of months when we get the uh, rounds through and let you know my final impressions. But as of right now, whew, if you had to ask me, I'd go get one. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please about your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.